Welcome to the Soul Ties Podcast with love and life coach Dale Lawrence, helping you detox from toxic relationships. Well, it is another Soul Food Sunday. Welcome to the world breaking, world renowned Soul Ties Podcast. Salute to all of my Soul Ties soldiers worldwide. It's the Love and Life Coach Dale Lawrence checking in. And back by popular demand, she's been so busy doing fly girl stuff. You know, radio stations, writing books, goal setting, Instagramming, Facebooking, all that fly stuff. My soul sister is back in the soul seat tonight. Sanai, what's happening? (laughs) Yes. Hey, I am so excited to be here with you. I'm ready to get into it. (laughs) Listen, listen, listen. I'm telling you right now, we got fans that love, you know, our first podcast did numbers. The second (laughs) one did numbers as well. And I know the people been missing you. I said, you know what? It's time to get Sana back. It is my favorite time of the year. Fall season. Today is a beautiful day. Uh, yeah. in, in the city, uh, and I'm telling you, the football season is upon us. I'm no sports guy, but I love that people <laughs> are co- getting together, congregating, and, and and doing what they do. Me, I, I'm just loving this autumn weather, and the, the 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 trees are changing colors in Tennessee. It's a it's a beautiful thing. So now, what's your favorite season? I think my favorite season is fall as well. You know, that nice crispness in the air it is. that's it yes that's it. and you know the fashion because in the summertime you, it's, it's boot just season. too hot just try it's boots. <laughs> boots and sweaters break them out yes i am so ready i know i know and listen and the listeners are ready tonight to hear the female perspective of this month's topic i'm toxic but you're poison Mm, yes. All right. Now, so now, let, me, let me tell you the motivation from this. Now, it comes from two of the flagship female artists <laughs> in the game right now. And that's why I'm I'm so excited. Last week, of course, the bishop, me and the bishop attacked it. The bishop gonna make mm-hmm. it do what it do, but you know, w- we want the ladies' perspective, especially in, because ladies have said this. Okay, let me give you a quote from Cardi B's up. <laughs> gotta argue with him because a brother love a toxic chick. Come on, party. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Now, Megan, in her new song, Pressurelicious, she says, and I quote, he say he toxic. Okay, well, I'm poison. Mm, and I come said, on, Maggie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I said, listen, all right. So we already know it's going to be one tonight. We already hear it. So, so... <laughs> So, so now here we go. Now, of course, Cardi and Megan, by far one of the leading ladies of hip hop right now, both Mm -hmm. with these lines that suggest that toxicity is sexy. Mm. And this is where it becomes a problem for our audience because our audience wants to detox. (laughs) <laughs> what, that's right you know they, they don't want any more toxic friendships toxic marriages toxic relationships but yet we have the leading ladies of the culture mm. megan saying okay not only is it okay for you to be toxic but i'm poisoned now we go get mm. into that we go go we go dive deeper into that but let's let's start with cardi's cardi says i got to argue with him I get, uh, yeah, yeah. See, see, you know, I analyze lyrics. I'm a words man myself. She says, I mm-hmm. got to argue with him because brothers love a toxic chick. Now, I'm going to kick it off. Now, so now I don't want you to just sit in the interviewer seat because you yourself are an amazing <laughs> thought leader yourself. And I'm so proud of how far you come since the, I mean, because when I first met you, you was behind the chair. You weren't even doing the fly stuff you're doing now. That's so true. now, That's so, right. so I need you to jump in your interview bag as well. And okay. we're going to just kind of go back and forth. But let me, All right. okay. So let me start with 
how brothers love that. Now, I, listen, I will say, I, 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 I'm just going to keep it all the way fucking tonight. And fellas, y'all may get mad at me. Do what you usually do. Hit me up in the DM and we're we going to talk about it. But what what the issue is, is that men, you do have this warp sense of acceptance to where you all, and, and fellas, y'all know, you do some things that set these women off. Mm. And and it's interesting to me that Cardi said that I got to argue with him because she recognized that men love that type of drama. They love that. T- you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. it's almost like, you know, and I've even heard certain men say, you know, you know, I, I you know, I get on the nerves. I, I touch the nerve because I know it leads to uh, better makeup sex. <laughs> like this is the craziness Dang. this is the craziness that men will say so you are injecting this poison into your relationship just for the sake just because you need some excitement in the mm. physical realm now we got uh, now, am I going too deep too early sis I mean no, what are we doing on. what are we doing here <laughs> Because because I feel like from a man's standpoint, because we do not know how to, it, you know, intelligently strike up the love, the excitement, you know, in a relationship mm-hmm. that we feel like, okay, the only emotion that men can trigger is toxic. Mm. Like, we're, 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 like, like, that's easier for the man. To, 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 to start a fight or mm-hmm. to do something stupid that you know your girl is going to be <laughs> upset with as opposed to, watch this, the hard work of actually loving her. Mm. Your thoughts? Well you, well, you know, this is what I was, as you were talking, this is what was coming to mind. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes some people... The only type of love that they've received in the past, whether from family, other people they dated, or whomever, comes in those moments mm. of high emotional intensity. That's true. So you get used to that, and you feel like, well, if somebody loves me, they show it by yelling. Mm. They show it in the, you know, anger is a really big emotion that a lot of us are familiar with, right? Like, okay, we can identify anger. It's a big emotion. And sometimes we want to feel that big emotion. Now we're looking for love, but we don't know what that feels like. So we believe that those moments of anger, we're still getting that emotional attention. Mm, that is good. Now let's move to the 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 the, the line before that. I got to argue with him. <laughs> now, what makes a woman feel like... It's your job to stir up the confusion. Uh, I mean, do, do, you, do, you do, do, do you have men figured out? Is, is that what it is? It, 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 are, are we that simple? Well. <laughs> where, where, you got, where, where, where you basically <laughs> have to start drama because the man ain't giving you the love you need. So you willing to get any type of emotional reaction, like you said, even to the point to where, okay, well, let me stir it up in the form of anger. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it is that way for a couple different reasons. So one, like I said before, not used to receiving love in some of the quieter ways or some of the Mm. softer ways. Mm -hmm. So you can recognize that engagement, right, that back and forth when it comes to anger or yelling, right? At least I know if you're yelling at me or arguing with me that, oh, there is some type of like or care. Right. Mm -hmm, Because mm -hmm. if you truly didn't care about somebody or care about their opinions, you would just ignore them. Mm, That's true. So as long as, you know, my boyfriend or whomever is, you know, arguing back with me, I know he still has some sort of interest in me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that can be part of it. The other part is sometimes, dudes, y'all don't be listening or the way y'all listen, y'all don't acknowledge the listening part. So now we in an argument because I'm just trying to figure out, did you even hear me? Hello? Can you just say something? A thumbs up? High five? Something? But 
it I ain't getting nothing. So now I got to start using some other strategies to get some sort of acknowledgement that you're hearing me. Hmm. Okay. And, and you're willing to use toxic ones. Maybe depending upon if I detox yet or not. Hmm. Hmm. So you can only use what you got. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can only use what that's good. You can only use what you got. So if you, so is it, so that's pretty much commonplace that everyone has the, these traces of toxicity in them. So therefore, when it comes to conflict resolution or the lack thereof, just straight conflict, this (laughs) is what they're using in their arsenal but yeah. what is the end goal? Let, let, let's go there. Is it that you mm. want men to listen? It, uh, uh, it, it, what's the end goal? Is the end goal what you want? Or do you just want men to understand? I think this is the, this is the question. Yeah, this is it really the is. question. We got to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> like, what is your end goal? And you know what? I think this is so important because when we're thinking about especially these two lyrics, and especially when we're talking about Meg lyric, sometimes the end goal, particularly in relationships like in today's time, it is to exploit or take advantage of the other person before they get a chance to exploit or take advantage of you. Whoa, back that thing up. Say that one more time for the <laughs> listeners and for the men who did not hear it the first time. Yes, sometimes the goal in these current relationships is to exploit, take advantage of the other person before they exploit or take advantage of you. Well, here's, well, well, let me ask you this. Then why get in a relationship to do that? Because people feel, this is what I think it is. Okay. Here we, this is what I think it is. Let's go. So we are, we are all humans. We're all human beings. Mm-hmm. And so by nature of being human beings, we need social connections. That's point blank period. That's how we were created, that we need connections. We need partners, not just romantic partners, but we need friends, community members, et cetera. So we have that need. But right now in the culture, what do we see? We see all this song, video, TV that is like, we're independent. We can do it by ourselves for both men and women. Like we don't need nobody. Yeah, but that's cap. It, it, 100%. So we're fighting against our own nature. We actually do need people. That is an actual need of humans. We need people. At the same time, we're ingesting all this messaging that says you can do it by yourself. You don't need anybody. Get what you can get. Exploit people. Build up your own personal wealth. Do it by yourself. (laughs) Self-made. Billionaire. All that. That's all exploitation. You don't get to any of that without exploiting people. Mm. So... When it comes to relationships, romantic relationships, we all need them. We want them on an emotional level, on a physical level, (laughs) but we don't know actually how to navigate and build with someone when all the messaging we're getting is you can do it by yourself. Mm. You should be able to do it by yourself. And if you can't do it by yourself, you're doing it wrong. So in your opinion, rather than exploitation, what do you feel that should be the end goal in a healthy relationship? Not this one that, not the cap that culture is <laughs> communicating, but but f- for what we as human beings really need. I feel like it's loving one another in a way that feels like freedom. Break that down. That that that, <laughs> that, that, that that has potential to be deep, but I I, I, I want to know how deep you go go with it. Let's go. Re- well, re- when I think this is how I've come to this conclusion, because I think a lot of the ways we we consider romantic relationships is through ownership and what a person is or is not supposed to do if they're your husband or wife. Hmm. And I feel like that type of love is constraining and constricting. And but, but wait a minute, though, sis. It's a fine line between that because, okay, case in point, if 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 there are certain things that may not be cool with us, mm-hmm. you know, like like it, uh, if, if, if like for instance, getting in a relationship, I believe that it's important 
communication is a very important fundamental key and mm-hmm. laying out expectations, right? For sure. So, 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 right. So you can't have one person going in thinking this is an open relationship and then somebody else coming in thinking this is an exclusive relationship. So mm-hmm. wouldn't the person who would, would want it to be open, would, couldn't they say, oh, well, you putting constraints on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They like, could say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's a fine line. So I don't, so, so l- let's help the listeners with that part right there because, you know, it's certain things that you want in a relationship. It's certain things that I would like in a relationship that I don't personally see as constraints, but more so just, you know, it's it's a culture that needs to be created that is advantageous for both individuals. The only way I feel like it's constraint is when it's not when it benefits only one individual. And mm-hmm. if we're coming together trying to be a team, it can't be no eyes in team. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me put it to you like this way. Okay. So I think a lot about my childhood. I was raised by my father. And the way my father raised me, of course, there were limitations. There were constraints, right? Every parent, there should be constraints on your children, right? You're not just going to say you can run out in the street, right? Right. Um, But the way my father loved me, I always felt like I knew that even if I made mistakes, that he was always, he was still going to love me. I would never feel like there's no place for me to go because I know my father's house is always open to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt that I could go after my dreams because of that reason. Because even if I were to quote unquote fail, I would never be alone. So when I say a love that feels like freedom, that's what I mean. A love that you feel safe, a love that you feel able to uh, explore, to go for your goals, to dream big, to sure. make mistakes. Sure. And that love and that relationship is still there. Mm. That's good. I, I, I like that. I like that because I would, because then I would go further to ask you if, okay, I give you a scenario. Let's say if, if, you know, if a guy is in a relationship and he tells his girl, hey, I don't want you still talking to your ex. Would that be considered a constraint or? Culture? I would not consider that a constraint. Right. So, so give, give, give the listeners an example of what is a constraint. I feel like when you love somebody in a way that feels like, uh, transactional. Mm. That to me, I think is getting more towards what I mean. Like love should not, love should be free. It's not a transaction. If you do this, then I'll do that. Ooh, not, 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 I'm, I'm a stretch you now. We go go deep. See, this is, this is why I love <laughs> these episodes. Cause come I, on, I'm a, come I'm a on. fan of your mind. Now I'm a fan and friend of your mind. Listen, so, okay. In saying that, and I agree with you. It should not be. But because I'm a 360 thinker, I know somebody out there is 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 is, is like on some. Okay, well, what about reciprocity? That's transactional. I feel like if I call you, and if I want to spend time with you, then I should expect the same in return. Should you? I think so, because that would mean it's reciprocity. And but then, if and, you're coming into it uh-huh. saying, I'm going to call you so mm-hmm. that you call me, that's not, that's so, so, so really, but, but, but so, so, so really, so then it's not about transaction then, it's about intentions. It is about intention, because if the only reason you are doing certain things is in order to receive that's a transaction. <laughs> now, some no, people no, no. say that, that, that. But, 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 how do you? But okay, that's true. But let's. But I feel like there that that there has to be a difference between the transaction you're talking because I get what you're talking about. You're talking about mm-hmm. intention and agenda, right? That's right. What yeah, that's what you're talking about. But 
I'm talking for the person who may be like, okay, but I believe in reciprocity and I'm going to side with that person that believes in reciprocity because reciprocity, it, it kind of feels in a way like transaction. The only thing I can see different based on what you're saying is the intent of the heart. Like, mm-hmm. it, uh, like what type of person are they? You see what I'm saying? Because right. we don't go to school, get pay for schooling, get diplomas, get degrees to go to a job and just say, oh, I want to freely do this because I love it. We expect mm-hmm. to get paid. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that would be transactional, but it is not transactional in a way that is has an agenda or saying that, okay, the only reason I'm in this field is because mm-hmm. there's money there. I, I don't care yeah. nothing about my patients. I don't care nothing about my students. I don't care nothing about the people I serve. I, I'm just here for the check. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So th- yeah. that makes a big difference right there. I think that's the difference between reciprocity and transaction without love. Uh, right. Transa- for sure. Yeah. Transa- I, I feel, and that's what I want to break down for the listeners out there. I, w- w- I feel like what Sanaa is saying, and I agree with her, uh, when she says that love should be free, meaning, okay, yes, you can go in saying, hey, I'm going to care for you. I'm going to give. I'm going to be my free, authentic self. But I do expect something. Now, I'm not doing what I'm doing to not get nothing back. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. this isn't a relationship, because this isn't charity work. That's for charity. Like, if you, mm-hmm. you, you know, if you give money to, you know, St. Jude or, you know, to uh, uh, someone on the street or, 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 or you're giving to an organization and you, okay, no, you're not doing, oh, all right, here, here's St. Jude. Now, when, if I ever have a child, I got, y'all, y'all go hook me up, right? <laughs> like that's that that's not that right that's that's mm-hmm. straight up generosity i'm giving i'm not expecting nothing back but i think in a relationship which is a covenant you know which which is leading to you know if if you want marriage it's leading to a covenant contract then there are i mean even your vows th- mm-hmm. those are you know okay i'm going to do this and you're going to do this. But when when you go into it with evil intent, I I think, you know, or like you said, just looking out for self. Like, I want mm-hmm. everything that I want out of this relationship, but as far as your needs go, eh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If I feel like it, if it, if it benefits me, and I think that's, you know, what what makes it toxic, that's what makes it poison is when the person's heart going in has an agenda. Definitely. Poison versus toxic. So, you know, Megan came from the the standpoint that the man was toxic, but the woman is poison. In your opinion, how can a woman be poison? Okay. For, for me, when I hear that, it's the same thing. Toxic poison, it's the mm, same thing. Mm. But women, we can be poisoned in the same way that I think the, that people can be poisoned, which is the power of the tongue. Life mm. and death is in the tongue. Mm. Like, we have to be way more careful about what we say, how we say it, and when we say it, because men are extremely, I don't want to say men, because I think it's people um, in general, we are very sensitive. Mm. The difference is a woman is probably going to say something when you hurt her and a man isn't. A man is more likely to keep it bottled up inside and let it poison him from the inside out. Mm, That's good. I think a man will do something and a woman will say something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and when I say men men do, even, even or not do. Right, exactly. That's what I was thinking about when pa- you said that. Passive yeah. aggression. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and yes, I'm telling the men secrets. Y'all know I do this <laughs> on the podcast because we got to break the curse. We got to pay. Yes, we got to break this. So now, let, let me tell you. Yes. If, if a woman <laughs> says something or does something to a man, 
it will either it, two, either two things are gonna gonna happen. He's going to do something that will hurt her, or he's going to not do something that will mm-hmm. even that will hurt her. Yeah, and this is sure. the thing about and this is the thing about a majority of men, and I'm gonna tell this secret too. They'll do things that it's really it's all about. It's a it's like it feeds their ego. Mm-hmm. So half the time. And, and women probably do this too. Half the time, the other person don't even got to know it. It's just the right. self. It's the self gratification that you get. Like, uh huh. <laughs> like she thinks she go <laughs> so go say that to me or do that to me. Okay, check. Yeah, yeah. Let me go out here. But because a- after all, it's your ego that's bruised. It's your yeah. emotions that's hurt. And maybe you're not man enough or woman enough to go to that individual and say, "Hey, what you did hurt me." What you did, you know, it insulted me, it upset me, whatever the case may be. So, like, you going back to what you said earlier, it's just all about who's going to exploit who first. Who's going to hurt each other first. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, we got a lot of work to do, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why I give you the business each and every week. So, listen... So now in closing, what would be your <laughs> advice to women? Uh, oh. Yeah. Who, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be your advice to w- women who is now in a culture that celebrates them being poisoned, um, advocates that y'all, you know, keep this up. Y'all keep this up because – you know, we want to further this cap that you don't need no man. You know, you don't mm. need relationship. You don't even need love. Mm. Love, love yourself. Oh, yeah, mm. do, yeah, yeah. Do uh, and, 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 and let me just add this caveat in there. Y'all know that that narrative is Luciferian. Mm. Do without mm-hmm. will. You know, everyone mm-hmm. thinks you know Satanism is all about just this red devil with horns and a, and a tail. No, no, no. Satanism really is about self-serving. Mm, come on. Yeah, that's 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 what's demonic. Demonic is all about. It's all really the the narrative that they're pushing is they want you to be isolated, you to be alone, you to be by yourself, and like I said, self-made, do it myself, get it on my own. I N D E P. Oh, that's me. All, all that. <laughs> that. That is the culture they're pushing. So, what do you say to women that you know are really hearing this message and and, and it's being disguised as self love? Oh, I think that is you know that right there. Yeah, that yeah. Point yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. Folks yeah. just need to go ahead to you know hit rewind, hit that fifteen second <laughs> back button, and listen to that because you said something there. Mm. Um, but I will go back to something that you said earlier, which was decide what it is you want. What is the outcome that you're looking for? That's if the good. outcome in your life is to be alone. Mm. and to use people for your own pleasure, then continue to do what you're doing. But if the outcome in your imagined future, you see yourself in a healthy, loving relationship, okay, what do you have to do to get to that point? And then it's like any other goal you have in your life. What are you learning? What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you putting into practice? If your goal is to have a loving, healthy relationship, then how much are you dedicated to that goal? Because I'll tell you, listening, <laughs> y'all don't don't come for me, but listening to music that glorifies being single and or using other people, what do you think is gonna come from that? Mm. <laughs> like that's why I tell people all the time, like you have to be so vigilant over what you think and what you allow in your mind. Right. Because when you don't know what to do next. You rely on the images, the scripts, the stories, the narratives that are already in your mind. So if all you watch is reality TV about relationships that are always up and down and so volatile or so extreme, guess what you're going to reproduce in your daily Mm, life? That's good. Yeah. The income will determine the outcome. 
Absolutely. What you put in, the, the, oh, well said, well said. And you know what, though? And you know what, sis? Check this out. The the folk that's singing that you should be single, independent, and love yourself and do all this, they all got men. All of them. All, all of them. 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 It is the biggest cap ever. (laughs) It is the big, y'all, open up y'all eyes. Everybody preaching this to y'all in songs, they got a man. Sit on that. Think on that. Thank y'all for listening. (laughs) Thank y'all for listening. We'll be back next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Sanai, thank you so much. It's so good to have you back. And we will not go so far and in between. Yes. To hear yes. your thoughts on the Soul Ties podcast. Thank y'all for listening, man. Peace and love. We'll see you next week on Soul Ties. Thank you for listening. We would like to bless you with the Soul Ties stimulus package, which includes the detox ebook, message, and exclusive podcast episode. Text Soul Ties. S O U L. T-I-E-S to 888-756-8681.